Welcome to the Faith and Business Podcast. I'm your host, Elle Edwards, mental health champion, happiness geek, and founder of the Faith and Business Playground. Join me each week as I talk openly about mental health, the dark side of entrepreneurism, and bring you Bible-friendly tools, support, and resources to help bring more joy to your journey. This episode of the podcast follows on from last week where we I introduced you to the happiness advantage the book I had for Christmas that I loved by Sean Aker and we also then ended the episode by asking okay so if we are if we're not naturally positive people if you tend not to default to happy does that mean you are stuck at that uh, feeling negative forever and I reminded you that no you're never stuck you always have a choice but I did promise in the last episode that this episode we would dig into some practical ways that you could um, you could raise your happiness quotient or happiness level, for want of a better expression. I don't have a level for that because um, I do believe that your your default happiness level. So when you're going about your day to day life, everybody has their default position, and if your default happiness position is errs towards positive than negative then when stuff happens like it happens to all of us and then you bounce back and you'll bounce back to your to your default position but if your default position is naturally quite negative and then something happens it can push you down lower um and so the the more we can do to increase our our default happiness position our our positive position the better that would be so i would encourage you if this sort of stuff is interesting to you um i would encourage you to do one of two things or do both if you're interested in the science behind this and actually really digging into some of the experiments you'd probably enjoy the happiness advantage so read it i'll put a link to it uh in in the show notes accompanying this episode um or you can just go onto amazon and search for the happiness advantage and you'll find it um or if you're a, if like me, you're a Jesus geek and you would like some actual practical day to day help in being more joyful, then come and join us in the Faith and Business Playground, faithandbusinessplayground.com. I have got a little mini adventure series that I'm busy building out that offers more of this stuff um, in, a, in a guided way. So that's the two things you can do. However, in terms of practical stuff, um, and I'm, these actually come from, from the happiness advantage because. Um, because it's brilliant. So why would I reinvent the wheel? Um, but there's a, there's a number of different things that, that Sean is suggesting that you can do to help raise your happiness level. The first one, what he calls meditate. Now, as people of faith, depending on how meditation has been presented to you, you might be like meditation, eh. because we're, we're made to think of like sitting on top of mountains and, and humming to ourselves. However, Meditation's mentioned in the Bible. We, it talks about how we, I think it's in Psalms, we, I meditate on your word all day long. To, if you can worry, you can meditate. So that, you know, then you get in that position and you're worrying and this problem is niggling at you. And that, you, you, know, you churn it over in your mind. That's worrying. Meditating can be, I mean, it, it can, meditating can just be sitting and in being aware of breathing in and then breathing out and breathing in and breathing out. And doing nothing. But you can also meditate on God's word. So you can pick a Bible verse that you want to be true for you. So think of some of the promises that are in the Bible. And whereas before you would worry and and chew over your worry, instead you're chewing over these Bible verses. And so you ponder on them and you reflect on them and you think on them. The lovely thing that you that happens when you do that is your brain serves up the stuff that it believes is important to you. So the more that you can ponder on and think on and consider and give time to those promises of God, the more they will feel like a reality and become a reality in your day-to-day life. And that in itself will help raise your happiness, your default happiness position. There's, there's studies of monks that they monks who spend years meditating they actually grow the part of their brain that is responsible for happiness i'm not suggesting that you need to go and spend years and years practicing this you can you can get the benefit of that just by by doing it from time to time obviously the more you do stuff i imagine the bigger the benefits will be 
but don't let that hold you back. This isn't a case of trying to do it perfectly. It's about trying stuff. Yeah. And that's always, that's why the faith and business playground is called the playground because I'm, although I, I step forward as the leader of this playground. I'm not like a dictatorial. Okay. This is the way to do this. It's for me, it's about, okay, well, try this and try that. And it's meant to be fun and light and freeing. And so if, as you're listening, you're like meditation, eh, right, I would encourage you just to try it. Right? Try the being still and quiet. If anything like me, being still and quiet, depending on how sleep deprived you are, you'll either fall asleep or the other thing that happens to me is my brain goes off on a tangent. Um, so, but, but don't worry about it. Just try it. If you find that having no thoughts in your head is a bit much for you, then pick some of those promises from God instead and ponder on those because all of it is beneficial and will help in, in growing your relationship with Jesus, but it will also help in raising your default happiness position. Another well-known, I say well-known, well-documented um, way to help raise your, your happiness level is to find something to look forward to. I don't know about you, but actually sometimes the anticipation of something can oftentimes be if not better than, is at least as good as the actual thing itself. So, you know, there, there's actually been, there's been studies that have shown, you know, I, I've said, I say to my children quite often um, that your brain, and remind them that your brain doesn't know the difference between real smiles and fake smiles. And as nonsensical as that sounds, it's actually true. It's been proven. If you, if you lift up the corner of your mouth and force yourself to smile, even when you're not feeling particularly happy, it will fire off stuff in your brain. And before you know it, you actually will be smiling for real. And it's the same principle as that. So your brain doesn't really know. If you start thinking about, I don't know, maybe you've got something happening on the weekend. If you start thinking about that and maybe planning for it and what bits of it you're going to be enjoying, it fires off the same parts of your brain as will be fired when you actually get to do the thing. So and that, that thing that you anticipate, it hasn't got to be something big and expensive and, you know, just, it, just little things, you know, I, I can't give you examples because it will be personal to you, but think about something that you're looking forward to and then really think about it because it will actually help make, you'll get to enjoy those feel good feelings for longer. The other thing as well, which is related to this, having, having, You've had the anticipation of the event. You have the event itself, which makes you feel happy. And then afterwards, you've also got the, sorry, if you heard that pinging noise, <laughs> my computer just pinged me. I'm, I try and edit those out, but I was mid sentence, which isn't going to work. Um, the, you've got the actual event. It's, you've got the anticipation of the event. You've got the event itself, but afterwards memories, thinking about reminding yourself what the, that's why looking at photographs of a holiday, for example, can make us feel happy. It again will fire things in your brain um, that will help raise your default happiness position. One of my other favorite ways to help put a smile on my face is those acts of random kindness. Um, some people call them acts of no random acts of kindness i like to call them acts of random kindness because it spells out arc just like a bit of a bible <laughs> thing in there doing things for other people just for the sheer joy of doing them not doing them because you've got an ulterior motive not doing them as oh yeah well an will me one just doing something for the for the sheer joy of it um you can think of examples. It can be random, silly stuff, holding a door open for somebody, paying for the coffee of the person behind you. It hasn't even got to be money stuff. Just, I, I mean, I love walking down the street in the town where I live and purposely making eye contact and saying, good morning to people. If it's the morning, if it was the afternoon, that would be weird. Um, you'll be surprised how many people don't get eye contact and that human contact you know we're so in our phones and in our devices real actual human interaction is becoming less common unfortunately so i love making eye contact and and i also love seeing the transformation on on people's faces you know what somebody can have what looks like quite a dour face and then you say come on in and give them a smile and they smile back and it like literally transforms their face um 
and they look like a completely different person because of that smile and it makes you feel wonderful but it infects them and makes them feel wonderful as well other things that you can do to help raise your happiness default position look at your environment if you heard the, the episode um where, where i talked about marie kondo um i jumped on the bandwagon because everyone's talking about marie kondo but as you'll have heard me mention in that episode our physical environment can impact how we feel. I know for myself, if I get to the end of the week and you know, we've got two dogs and uh, we've got stone floors and it can look a bit like tumbleweed with because the, they both molt, um, or the sun comes through and you can suddenly see all the dog hair. Um, and so I do quite like on a Friday afternoon and sometimes on a Sunday afternoon, depending on how I'm feeling, I like having a quick run around with a hoover so I can come down Saturday morning and the house looks like nice and fresh and new and it does lift you up. I don't particularly enjoy cleaning. I like the effects of cleaning. And so I want you to consider your, your physical environment um, at home, but also in work as well. If, what can you do to make your desk put a smile on your face? We, I don't think it's, um, it's a bit cliche when you, know, you see people's um, offices with pictures of the people they love in front of them. But actually looking at the people we love and seeing reminders does lift us and puts a smile on our face if you've heard the episode where i talked about um dream boards and vision boards you'll know that above my desk i now have um it's the first time ever actually i've properly done it thanks to my friend louise but i've got photographs there of things that remind me of things that are important to me and two of those photographs are pictures of my husband and the children when we're out and about um on holiday uh, and they i look at those and they always make me smile and so i want you to consider your environment both at home and at work as well. It's one of the reasons why I love, I, I work from home. It's one of the reasons why I love having fresh flowers. They smell amazing, they look lovely. Um, it's not selfish to want to have those lovely things in your environment. It actually will help lift you. And that in turn will help you be more productive and, and actually be more successful and get more stuff done. Another one, and this, this one um, is what I'm gonna end with. I almost didn't include this one because you might groan depending on your relationship with the thing I'm about to mention. It's exercise. Now, until just, oh, just over a year ago, um, about 13 months ago now, my eldest daughter uh, persuaded us to, to sign up for a family membership of our local leisure centre. Prior to that, if you'd have said to me, do you like exercise? Eh, no. I do like walking now. I didn't used to. I remember <laughs> being dragged up the Brecon Beacons when I was pregnant with said eldest daughter hating every moment of it if you'd have said to me when i was in my early 20s oh let's go for a walk I'm like no nah, you're okay thanks no way i love walking now i love being outside um it's the reason I'm, my one of my little claims to fame is i've done 10,000 steps or more every single day since november 2015 largely thanks to my friend sarah who we signed up to a challenge together but i've got this streak going now it's over a thousand days i can't break it however despite the fact that i you know, would have told you I like I do like walking that was the only exercise I did until we joined the local leisure, leisure center and I figured well since we're paying for this I might as well try out some of the classes and I started kettlebell combat and kettlebells and now box fit and um, some of you listening will have heard me before rave about these things I go three or four times a week and I love it it's become a consistent part of my routine even when things were a bit stressful or if you know I think I missed one one time when, <laughs> when the rabbit died um, but generally speaking those are appointments that I keep because my children are old enough even if my husband's working I can leave them on the in the house on their own for an hour while I go through a kettlebell around for example but there is something about exercising that it does it releases all those feel-good chemicals for me personally I also do better when I exercise with other people I there was one time where our, our instructor was poorly and usually kettlebell combat is a, a choreographed class so we're all doing the same thing and it keeps the energy up uh, but this one <laughs> one particular week he was poorly and so a different gentleman came in and we did circuits where we said, right, just go at your own pace. Now, I learned that day is if you tell me to go at my own pace, my, my default pace is slow and I will not push myself. I need that class, that high energy environment. You get to know people as well. I've made friends in that class. So as well as the feel good chemicals that can be released as a result of moving your body in some way, I would also encourage you to experiment and see, you know, are there things that you can do as part of a group? Because you will meet new people and you know, just being around people can help lift you as well. 
So try some of these things out. Like I said already in the, in the, when we talked about meditation, if one or two of these make you go, oh no, I want to poke my own eyes out, fine. Maybe don't try that first. But I would encourage you to try stuff. Like I tried three spin classes. I did give it three times, but it just wrecked my knees. I decided that no, spin is not for me. But I personally believe you can't try something one time and go there. Nah. Because anything, when, you, when something is new, it's always going to feel a bit trickier. So I would encourage you, give it three attempts. And if after three tries, you're like, no, Al, sorry, this really isn't for me. Okay, fine. And if you are in the faith and business playground, come back to me, tell me what you've tried. It might be that we need to switch it up a little bit or tweak it or some variety on that. Um, but unless you try these things, you won't know whether or not you enjoy them. Um, so that's, that's the biggest takeaway from this is there's loads of different stuff you can do to help increase your, and, and raise your default happiness position. But unless you try it, it's pointless. And final reminder, if you enjoy this, if this stuff resonates with you, please come and join us in the faith and business playground. We are building a community of fun, loving Jesus geeks. So together we can reclaim what it means to be Christian in the 21st century faith and business playground. Dot com. In the meantime, thank you for listening. If you do enjoy these and you're not already subscribed, I would encourage you to subscribe. If you really enjoy these, I would encourage you to leave a review because um, it will help other people to find it as well. But in, regardless of all of that sort of stuff, more than anything else, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. I look forward to catching up with you next time. Take care.